Well, there'll be another horror double bill next Saturday evening when the beast from 20,000 Fathoms puts in an appearance and a scientific accident produces the Night of the Lepus. That's the horror double bill next Saturday evening starting at 10.35. Today I'm doing part 6 of the BBC Horror Double Bill Seasons and this one's from 1980 and I class this one as maybe the second best season just behind Dracula, Frankenstein and Friends it lasted 10 weeks and 19 films because the final week was just one film so there's a great mixture of different films from Amicus, Hammer, all black and white films so it's a really good season this one it even has three werewolf films in it. So I'll do like I did before. I'll rate the first film and the second film because I, I, I've got a theory that the second film's always best. And up to now it has been. It's won all five seasons. So it's just a bit of funny to only my opinion. So the first week was a brilliant horror double bill. And it was on the cover of the Radio Times. I remember seeing the cover as a kid. Coming back from school getting really excited. The first film's... Night of the Demon from 1957 and the second film's The Ghoul from 1975. So Night of the Demon, I've re already reviewed it on my channel. It's based on the M.R. James story, Casting the Runes. And this film's excellent. It's brilliant atmosphere in this film. All about the supernatural. And a lot of the film, you don't actually say the, the demon. It's all kept to the audience's imagination. Until the final, when you do say the demon. And I always thought that they kind of spoilt it saying the demon right at the end. Because although it looked okay, I think it would have been more scarier if it was all left to the audience's imagination. A bit like not saying the witch in the Blair Witch Project. That made that film more scarier, not saying the witch. This film would have been much better if you didn't say the demon at the end. So the second film, The Ghoul, that stars Peter Cushion, John Hurt, Veronica Carlson. Great cast. That's just some of them. And I think this is an underrated gem. It's one of Peter Cushion's best performances. He uses a picture of his real deceased wife, Helen in the film and you, you, you can tell he's really emotional looking at the the photo so he gives an outstanding performance in this film so out of these two films i'm definitely giving it to the ghoul so that's the first film zero the second film one the second film had the beast with five fingers from 1946 Chamber of Horrors from 1966. So the best with five fingers it stars Peter Lorre. This is possibly his best film. I, th I think he's excellent. Really funny in it. Film's about a crawling hand and there's some actually some good effects in this film. And there'd be another film later in this season featuring a crawling hand story and that's Dr. Terrace House of Horrors. So there's some good laughs in this film. It's sort of like a comedy horror. The second film, Chamber of Horrors. And this was originally shot as a TV pilot film for a proposed series called House of Wax. And it uses gimmicks like a figure flasher, makes the screen flash red for a few seconds, and a horror horn if some gore is coming. So these are just gimmicks trying to make the film a bit better than what it is. It's just really an average film. So out of these two films, I'm definitely giving it to the base with five fingers. <laughs> So that's the first film one, the second film one. The third week had The Mad Ghoul from 1943 and Dr. Terror's House of Horrors from 1965. So The Mad Ghoul, it's just kind of like a stereotype mad scientist sort of film. So he's trying to find eternal life using experiments and he ends up turning into a ghoul. So it's not really that good a film. Whereas the Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, the second film that night, it's brilliant. It's the first Amicus anthology film. It stars Peter Cushion, Christopher Lee, Roy Castle. It's directed by Freddie Francis. And it's got one of the best Lincoln stories set on a, a train. Peter Cushion's given his, um, 
using tarot cards to read the other five people's fortunes. The stories include Werewolf, Creep and Vine, Voodoo, Disembodied Hand and Vampire. So this is a great film. All five of the stories are brilliant. So out of these two films, I'm definitely giving it to Dr. Terrace House of Horrors. The tarot deck is a picture book of life. An answer to the deepest questions of philosophy and history. And sometimes a means of prediction. Like uh, fortune telling. Of a card. So that's the first film one, the second film two. The fourth week had The Devil Doll from 1936 and Daughters of Satan from 1972. So The Devil Doll, it's directed by Todd Brownan and it stars Lionel Barrymore as a mad scientist shrinking people. You say effects of people shrinking. It's just an average sort of film. Whereas Daughters of Satan, that's an excellent film. It's one of those underrated gems. And I reviewed it on my channel. It was filmed in the Philippines. I've lived there for a while. Lovely place. It stars Tom Selleck, the guy who played Magnum. So Tom Selleck buys a painting that has three witches in and things keep vanishing out, out of the painting. And the film has a horror ending. Really good. It also has a groovy 70s music score. So out of these two films, I'm definitely giving it to Daughters of Satan. <laughs> First film one, the second film three. Week five was one of the best double bills ever. It was two colour films this week. There were The Curse of the Werewolf from 1961 and From Beyond the Grave from 1974. So Curse of the Werewolf's a hammer film. It's directed by Terence Fisher and it stars Oliver Reed as the werewolf. Great makeup on Oliver Reed. So just a pity you didn't say more of it. Really great looking werewolf, but you only see it at the end of the film. Whereas From Beyond the Grave, I class it as possibly my favourite Amicus anthology film, just below Tales from the Crypt. I'll probably class it as joint favourite. Them two films are the best. So in this film, it's got an amazing cast. It's got Peter Cushion, Donald Pleasance, Ian Bannon, Diana Dawes, David Warner and it's a great film I especially like the Donald Pleasant story. The stories are called The Gate Crusher, An Act of Kindness, The Elemental, The Door. So Peter Cushion runs his shop and when these customers come in buying things they get an unexpected surprise when they get home. So every story is brilliant. So out of them two films I'm definitely giving it to From Beyond the Grave. That's the first film one, the second film four. Week six had Paranoiac, 1963, and Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter from 1974. So both these films are from Hammer. Paranoiac, it's one of those um, Hammer thrillers that they did. Although Hammer's famous for horror films, they did some cracking thrillers. And this stars Oliver Reed again, and it's directed by Freddie Francis. And it's a pretty good film. However, the second film, Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter, that's my favourite Hammer film. I've reviewed it on the channel, it's excellent. So Captain Cronus is a vampire hunter and he, he's got this hunchback assistant and he teams up with Carolyn Monroe and they were going to have a planned series. This was going to be the first film of a series where Captain Cronus defeats different sorts of vampires, different time periods. Because his name Cronus also means time. So he was going to be in different time periods. So it would have been a fantastic series of films. And it was written and directed by Brian Clemens, who was excellent. So out of these two films, definitely giving it to Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter. To the death. So be it. So that's the first film one, the second film five. So week seven had The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms from 1953 and Night of the Lepers from 1972. 
So the base from 20,000 Fathoms, it's like your cliche 50s giant monster movie. But the effects are excellent. And it's based on the novel The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. The effects were done by Ray Harryhausen. They're like stop motion effects, a bit like King Kong. Whereas Night at the Lepers, it's, it's classed as a terrible film. It's a sci-fi horror film about mutant rabbits. And I remember watching this as a kid thinking, what the crap's this? Terrible film. So out of them two films, I'm definitely giving it to the first one. So that's the first film two, the second film five. Week eight had The Bat from 1959 and Legend of the Werewolf from 1975. So The Bat's a crime mystery thriller. It's interesting because Vincent Price stars in it. And it's about a murderer called the Bat, so <laughs> it's nothing to do with Batman. So it's not really a horror film, it's just like a black and white thriller. Whereas Legend of the Werewolf from 1975, that's excellent. It's very similar to The Curse of the Werewolf that was on earlier this season. It's almost like a remake, and the werewolf design looks similar. Excellent werewolf makeup. It was directed by Freddie Francis and stars Peter Cushion. It's a Tyburn film, so it's like a little underrated gem like The Ghoul is. That's a Tyburn film as well. So out of these two films, I'm definitely giving it to the second film. Christine knows I'm here. She's waiting for you. I'm alone, I swear. So that's the first film two, the second film six. Week nine had The Tower of London from 1939. And the second film was The Skull yeah! from 1965. So The Tower of London's more of a, a, an historical film, it's not a horror film. However, it does have a great cast. It's got Basil Rathbone, Boris Karloff, Vincent Price again. So it's worth watching for the cast. Whereas The Skull, Bones' favourite film. That's how helps us review films. So I better not say anything bad about it. Ah, you better not say anything wrong about the bloody skull. Or I'll kick your bloody ass, Phil. <laughs> it's directed by Freddie Francis. It's an amicus film. And it's got Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee here. And there's some great direction. I like the point of view with the skull. Where the camera's behind the skull and it's looking out through the skull, through its eye sockets. thought that was excellent direction. But it's also unique that there's very little dialogue the second half of the film. So uh, that was pretty unusual. Great film. But I've got to say that, otherwise I'll get wrong off bones. Ah, you will get bloody wrong. So out of them two films, I'm definitely giving it to the skull. He offered me a death's head, which he said is a skull of the Marquis de Sade. He wanted a thousand, but finally they came out to five hundred. And naturally, I'd like to have it in my collection, if it's genuine. It's genuine enough. Well, how could you possibly know that? Because, my dear fellow, it was stolen from me. So that's the first film two, the second film seven. Week 10 was unusual because there was only one film. So I can't put this in the marks for the other films because it's a standalone film. The film was The Beast Must Die from 1974. It's an excellent film. I'll have to review this film on my channel. It's the third werewolf film of this season. It has an amazing cast. Peter Cushion's in again. Calvin Lockhart, Charles Greer, Anton Differin. And it's unusual that there's a wolf break. Where everyone has to decide how the bloody werewolf is. Really unusual. You have 60 seconds to decide and there's a clock tick in the seconds. This is the werewolf break. Have you guessed who the werewolf is? <laughs> there's also some groovy 70s music that's excellent. The only disappointing thing is the werewolf looks poor. It's only a bloody dog. <laughs> but it's a classic film, I love it. So uh, did the second film beat the first film again? What are the scores on the doors? The first film got two, the second film got seven. So the second film won once again, it's six out of six. So there's only two more of these horrible bills to review. That's season seven from 1981. And that had an emphasis on Val Luton films. So there's a lot of Val Luton films in that season. And then in 1982 there was a gap year. For some reason they didn't do a horrible bill that year. However it did come back in 1983. 
and it was exclusively Universal Monster Movies that season. And that was unfortunately the last season. So I've got them two seasons to review and then I've completed the series. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye everyone. The time now has just gone 21 minutes to one o'clock and time for us on BBC Two to switch out the lights and head home very shortly.